I'll challenge Great Britain, isn't it? Yeah, it's amazing to get all the talent from across the world coming to our small little island with our beautiful tracks that weren't necessarily designed for these type of cars, but definitely <laughs> lend themselves yes. to the racing. And you think the speed that these cars are carrying around here, it is literally like threading the eye of the needle. When it comes race day, it's so hard to keep the concentration up on every single element. You're getting bombarded from every angle, cars behind you, cars to your side. Qualifying is the only bit where it's all about you yeah. and you've just got to maximise the performance out of the car at that single given moment. Yeah, we talk about Alton Park being narrow. Well, not necessarily. It's the cars that have got wider. Bear in mind, even in the early 1980s, uh, this circuit played host to contemporary Formula One races. There was the British Formula One Championship for a few seasons that morphed into uh, an MCD single-seater championship for still relatively contemporary Formula One cars. Uh, but as cars have got wider over the years, it makes the circuit look very narrow indeed. Now here, hustling on, is Ricky Collard. So we've seen what Dad can do. Sandy Mitchell has just illustrated what the Lamborghini can do in this session because he's the fastest on a 133.097. Remember, they're kind of aiming for uh, a 131, a high 131 to be comparable to Jules Gounon from last year. Sandy Mitchell from Tom Gamble from Alex Buncombe at the moment is the order across the line then uh, goes number 63, Ricky Collard, third fastest. So not for long, Marcus Clatter now goes third fastest. Yeah, there's quite a different strategy there. You can see Smalley was still hanging around. We've got purple sectors coming in from Phil Keane, yet to register a lap. They obviously went out a little bit later, looking for that sort of slightly more optimal track grip level. Gamble crosses the line, where does he go? All the way up to first position, 32-8. We're within a second now of that goon on lap, aren't we? So yeah. here we go with Phil Keane, just under a tenth up, hustling it. You can see his eyes through that big wide visor. Uh, supply from Demon Tweaks. He gets a good sponsorship deal from them. He keeps telling me about it. But, uh, <laughs> it's very nice. Through you Druid's, say jealously. Yeah, yes. <laughs> this Druid's corner for the Mercedes, I think, is so strong. Front engine car, you can chuck the front in, it grips, and then you can just release it. Some of the mid engine cars just sometimes a bit tentative with their turn in phase there into the last corner. Sector two was strong. Is it going to be enough? all the way through the last corner. Don't hit the sensor, the little metal strip that takes the old picture if you do run too wide there. Pushing all the way to the line. Where do we see him go? P3, two and a half tenths off pole. Has he got any more? There's certainly the time available, just four minutes, so there's time for one more lap. Sandy Mitchell, the fastest by only 17 thousandths from Tom Gamble. Phil Keane, third, as you've seen. Martin Plowman is up to fourth. Ricky Collard is fifth. Alex Buncombe now sixth. Johnny Adam has just gone seventh ahead of Raffaele Marcello. So there's a little fight going on between those two, but only seventh and eighth. Marcello, Johnny Adam, bit of a surprise in a sense that, that they're further down up to fifth now. Callum McLeod, who's still rather overlooked and underrated, bearing in mind that when he was winning in Formula Ford, it was uh, against Porsche factory driver Nick Tandy, but Callum's career didn't go quite as stratospheric as Nick's did, but he's still a very, very rapid driver indeed. Here, down towards Lodge Corner, once more, Cam Sandy Mitchell. This is the fastest car in the session, but he's lost a bit of time in the middle sector of this lap. Yeah, not much, just a hundredth, but you sometimes feel like you need to bank a really strong second lap, because if you do, he does slightly improve ever so slightly, but if you lose your first lap because of an offence, you need that second lap as a bit of a banker lap, though you're still up there. Phil Keane, still purple in sector one, so he's improved again there. Last lap, he had sort of the sweepstake of colours. He has purple one, green two, yellow three. See him kicking up the paint on the exit curb. Is that McLaren going to compromise him? It's probably just out the way. Martin Plowman looks like he's setting up his own lap. So it was all in this final sector that Phil didn't quite optimise that Mercedes from two Cs.